Max is the reincarnation of HBO Max, a streaming service with an already pretty great feel to it. Good catalog, good suggested content, all the bells and whistles. So when its new incarnation, Max, launched, I was skeptical. And so were a lot of other people. How will they merge Discovery with Warner Brothers, <clears throat> I mean Warner Media, into a new and improved platform for all ages and all IQ levels? I mean, seriously, get me the average ACT scores for MILF Manor fans. Can't wait for the Naked and Afraid and Chowder crossover. That's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> In all seriousness, this is a lot of content that really needs to be organized effectively. It's coming from all different demographics. UI is important when it comes to designing a streaming service. Disney Plus? Horrible UI. F tier. Hulu? Actually, Hulu's not terrible. A lot of ads, though. I needed Gary's help because I played the game for one and a half hours without getting any legendary heroes. What? No way! Did you download the game for the link below? I... I didn't. Idiot! You download the Gundam game! As long as you download from the link below, you'll get 777 drugs for free within seven- But HBO Max was the interface king, and now that it's gone, let's see if we can inherit a worthy successor. First off, the name. I think this is the one thing that we can all objectively say is bad. Look, Max is just way too generic. And dropping HBO from the name implies that you're not confident in the quality of the new stuff you're putting on here. I think they even came out and said that at one point. Those three letters, HBO, always stood for quality programming. So I think removing it from the name was just a huge oversight. It's bad for SEO too. I mean, I make the jokes about, you know, the 18th search result on Google, but it's true. I think it is the first search result on Google Chrome right now, but yesterday it wasn't. Check this out. Google image search max logo. If you're not in the top search results, even if it's image search, that's not good. But it is new, so maybe give it time. We'll see. So now that we've got the preliminary stuff out of the way, let's move on to the UI itself. Once we find the actual search result for logins and we're successfully signed in, we get presented to a homepage that's actually pretty good. I have to give them credit where credit is due. The subtle gradient blue color scheme looks very nice and clean. It's not hard on the eyes, and it's not boring either. It's a nice dark theme. And they've got a little teaser here for a new show that they want to push. This show right now is live action. Understandable, more live action content, you want to push it. But if you flip over and come back to the site after some time, it could be an animated series. I tried this, it did happen for me. One thing you'll notice quickly about Max is that they balance animation with live action pretty well. The reason why all the animation fans like me were upset when this deal happened is because we thought that animation was just going to get flushed out of the company and they were going to focus on, I hate to say it for fans of these shows, but kind of trash TV. I already brought up MILF Manor. I mean, what? <laughs> you're not Pornhub, you're Max. But hey, if it's entertaining, power to you. But this little preview of a new show is effective. It's a good way to hook new viewers in, and when you hover over it, it does play a little bit of that episode. If you look here, you can see my watch history was successfully migrated into the new interface, so no problems there. Just recently got into South Park, and obviously Clone High, and it's all here, continue watching. A white box outline is the highlight that comes up when you cursor over a new episode. It's noticeable, clean, and doesn't actually cover any of the thumbnail. It's little details like this that you really have to comb over to check to see if they're up to snuff, and so far, it's looking pretty good actually. One addition I think really works, they had this in HBO Max 2 I believe, but it just looks a bit cleaner here, is the new episode tag for any given show. Just a little banner right in the top left corner, not too big, not too small, just right to where it's noticeable. So far, this UI is a lot more intuitive than I thought it would be. It feels like they just took HBO Max as a base and just made minor tweaks here and there, which I can respect. Why start from the ground up when you've already got something great you can just expand upon? So, I can't really show you a capture of any of these shows themselves. As many of you already know, streaming services like these have, uh, safeguards on them so you can't just screen grab something and put it on YouTube. Understandable. 
We're pretty advanced here, but we're not advanced enough to get around that. But I bring this up because I did want to mention my one gripe with actually playing a show or a film. When you pause or skip ahead, the middle of the screen flashes a sort of black blur that doesn't really gel with the rest of the design. I believe other streaming services have white flashes. Some of them just have no flash at all. I'm a big fan of the no flash. It's kind of an addition that doesn't really have any practical use. Like, yeah, I just pressed pause. I know. <laughs> I don't need you to signify that to me. Maybe you think it looks good with the new design. I think it looks kinda ugly. It doesn't flash enough of the screen for it to be a total wipe, but it's not subtle enough to where you won't really notice it. Kind of an eyesore. Now I really like this part. It's a section for minority voices, and these are always welcome, and they're always appreciated, but it looks like a little more care was put into it. The background here is unique to this tab. It's a design. They're getting really artsy with it, and I appreciate that. It still shows part of the selection of films and TV along with this design. I know Disney Plus will have collections, but on the thumbnails for the collection, they won't actually show you what's in it. It's just a small box. This, I think, is a lot more effective. It's gonna get more people to click on it. So let's run through the categories. You got Featured, Just Added, Brand Spotlight. Eh, this is all standard stuff. Then you get to some of the more curated ones. Meet Your Next Obsession, Popular movies, I wouldn't group Shazam 2 in there, but you know what, sure. Watch with the family, enter the DC multiverse, great title. Become an ID armchair detective, alright, get a little fancy. Uncover a hidden gem, yes. Shout out to these people for recognizing cult classics as a legitimate category. These are all very creatively titled, and they're specific so you know exactly what you're getting into. They know that people binge this stuff. That's how you watch content nowadays. And they have titles that make it obvious what they're doing, and they make it obvious that they know what you want. Okay, animation with an edge? Very respectful, I love that. Now this is interesting, they have one here called Last Chance, and I think that means they're about to remove it from the site. That's not confirmed. It's hard to get stuff like this confirmed right now, because it's so new but I can't really think of anything else it would mean. I appreciate how they're letting you know that this stuff is about to leave, watch it while you can. Honestly, I came into this review hoping to shit all over Max. I gotta give them credit, I mean, I mean I'm over here trying to be a hater, but I gotta be honest, I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. It's kind of a letdown for this video actually. <laughs> I kinda wanted to, uh, I don't know, make fun of it, but I can't do that when they're not giving me anything to make fun of. So props to them. Now, Max has some pretty good customization options. You can change your profile name, enter a four digit pin. All that stuff is pretty standard. I mean, that would suck if you couldn't change your name. And it looks like you can also change your avatar. Oh, so wait, you can just be all of these characters? That's pretty awesome. I know Disney Plus did something similar, but it looks like they have a very wide range of characters here. You can literally be different sharks from Shark Week. Who else does that? No one. Again, nice mix of animation, cartoon classics, and the live action stuff from Discovery. We really thought they were gonna push animation aside, but they're not. Hey, Marvin the Martian is here. Back from the black hole of cancellation, I see. And including the Harry Potter house logos. Really nice touch. I'm not a fan of Harry Potter. I think sometimes the fan base is a little crazy, but hey, ex Rick and Morty super fan over here, so I get it. People will really connect to that. Every decision here seems calculated and smart. Uh-oh, what did I just say? Uh, hmm, can I take it back? Velma? Ugh, Velma, get, get out of here. Okay, this is really intuitive, maybe too intuitive. You can actually change the font, the size, the color, the opacity, and the style of the subtitles. I mean, who, wh who thinks of this? I don't anticipate this will be a really popular customization option, but it's still cool nonetheless. I mean, they're giving you the options. I guess, you know, for people who have a harder time seeing, you can make the captions bigger. That's very thoughtful. All in all, Max, looking pretty great. The UI is smooth, it's clean, helpful tags for new episodes, creatively titled categories, and a nice enough balance of live action and animation. Pair that up with what I believe to be a great Clone High revival, and you've got yourself a good week for Warner. Still not down with the name, but hey, one bad thing in a sea of good things, pretty alright. Also, to those of you who think the Clone High reboot is bad, just want to say, your opinion is always valid here. I respect that. But, in the first episode, I just noticed that the board of shadowy figures is still sponsored by Puma. That is some incredible continuity. I'm just gonna leave that there. That's all I wanted to say. So anyway, that was my pretty, pretty 
you know, positive review of Max. Didn't expect it, but it's welcome. By the way, I was using the desktop version for this video. Mobile version is pretty much the same. No huge differences. Anyway guys, just want to say thank you all so much for the incredible support on that last video. To all my new subs, if you want to chat with me on a more personal level, or you just want a place to share your art and get some feedback, check out the Discord. There's only nine of us in there right now, so if you join, you will have a voice. This isn't like a massive YouTuber members chat where you just get lost in the shuffle. I really want to connect with you guys. This Discord isn't really focused too much on the channel specifically, it's more of just a place for artists and YouTubers to come together and make their stuff better. So I hope you consider that. Remember to subscribe for the short 5-10 minute videos exactly like this one. My avatar changes outfits every day. And thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you in the next one.